So, a few months ago, I convinced some friends to take part in a challenge with me. For 24 hours, we would write down every product that we put in, on, and around our bodies. By in, I mean everything we eat, drink, and ingest. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee, tea, water, soda, chips, and of course, wine. By on, I mean everything that we put onto our bodies. Skin lotion, shampoo, conditioner, perfume, antiperspirant, body spray, and hopefully sunscreen. And by around, I mean everything that we bring into our homes that get onto our hands and into the air we breathe, such as laundry detergent, dish soap, fabric softener, bug spray, air fresheners, and of course, everyone's fall favorite, pumpkin spice scented candles. <laughs> the next day we shared our tallies, just what we used in 24 hours, and the results were pretty interesting. On average, we used 47 products in a day, which essentially means 1,400 products or exposures to those products in a month, 17,000 exposures to those products in a year, and over 170,000 exposures to those products in a decade. Now, admittedly, this was a small sample size, but if you were to try the same challenge at home, you'd likely find similar results. In our modern lives, we are awash with products. Every day, we use a cocktail of natural and synthetic compounds in our mouths, on our skin, and in the air we breathe. We don't think much about it, it's just part of life. But you'd think, you'd hope, that all of these products were tested. I mean, if they end up on store shelves, they must be safe, right? Well, that's what I thought too. But here's the deal. There are over 90,000 commercial and industrial chemicals approved and registered for use in all of our products in the United States. The food industry, uses over 3,000 food additive chemicals in their products. And the average American consumes five pounds of these food additive chemicals in a year. Now, of course, there are many chemicals that are not harmful, but the vast majority of chemicals, these 90,000 chemicals, have never been tested for safety or toxicity in humans, whether as a single chemical or as a mixture of chemicals. And research shows, these chemicals get into our bodies, into our blood, our urine, our breast milk. And in pregnancy, they can even cross the placenta into a growing fetus. Research also shows that as the number of chemicals in our environment has grown dramatically over even just the last 100 years of our entire existence, so too have new cases of diabetes, heart disease, Obesity, autism, asthma, food allergies, autoimmune disease, thyroid conditions, infertility, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and cancers worldwide. And for many of these conditions, the numbers are predicted to increase. Now, I'm a doctor and a researcher. I went to medical school. I've been in medical practice for almost 20 years. And I didn't know any of this stuff until about eight years ago when my dog became really, really sick. This is Truxton, Sir Commodore Truxton, my firstborn. One day he's a happy-go-lucky four-year-old and the next our vet is telling us that he has a debilitating liver disease called autoimmune hepatitis. Now as an autoimmune disease doctor for humans, this was an incredibly sad irony for me. But as a mother, I was completely heartbroken. I researched his illness and found out that it's not only rare in dogs, but particularly rare in golden retrievers. I thought about his drinking water. 
I wondered if his food and his dog treats might have been contaminated. I questioned the bug sprays and pesticides that we spray in our home, on our lawns, in our neighborhoods, and even our surrounding farmland, and even his flea and tick collar and medication. And I became highly suspicious of that red plastic toy that he always had in his mouth, even while he slept and never dropped it out. Sadly, we never understood or could figure out what made Sweet Truxton so sick, and he did eventually pass away. But his illness opened my eyes up to a whole nother world called environmental health, how our environment impacts human health. I reviewed vast bodies of research on pesticides, air pollution, plastic chemicals, stain retardant chemicals, food chemicals, food packaging chemicals, cosmetic chemicals, chemicals on furniture and fabrics such as stain guard chemicals, even cell phone radiation and other types of radiation. I scoured position statements from the World Health Organization, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the Endocrine Society. And let me tell you, I was shocked and enraged. Where are the regulations, the consumer protections? Where's the labeling and the appropriate testing? And at the very least, why had I not seen any of this in all my years of schooling? And so my journey began. I started tossing stuff. I made changes to my personal behavior. I changed out my decisions for my family. I got rid of Oreos and Cheese Whiz, which I loved. I swapped out cleaning products with pungent ingredients for ingredients in products that, had, that were more like my grandmother used to use. I swapped out cosmetics and personal care products for safer versions, and I got rid of air fresheners which, by the way, do not actually freshen the air. They do quite the opposite. But I came just shy of changing my hair color back to its original light brown color. <laughs> you see, there are some sacrifices I won't make, at least for now. You see, it's all a matter of choice. We do what we can. But I knew I had to get this information out on a much bigger scale. And so being in the medical community, I figured I'll start there, talking to other doctors about all of these untested chemicals and all of our products, our patients' products, and other critical exposures, what they might be doing to our patients' health, and then what we can do about it. I lectured to over a dozen hospital systems over the course of a few years, but I found a rather lukewarm response. And then one night, I'm in my kitchen talking with my kid's teenage babysitter, and she asked me whether or not her lip balm and her shampoo might be causing her harm. And at that very moment, a light bulb went off. What if we shared this information with adolescents and teenagers so they could establish healthy habits now and make better decisions throughout their lives? I knew that environmental health was not part of the standard curriculum in my state, so I reached out to a very forward-thinking principal and head of science in our area, and together we created pilot projects, several of them, to see whether or not the students were interested or even receptive to this kind of information. For one pilot project, I created six lectures on environmental health topics, such as drinking water, indoor and outdoor air quality, including vaping, mental health in our environment, and safe use of cell phones and technology. For the personal care products talk, I jumped in my car, I drove to a big box store, I filled a shopping cart with cosmetics and personal care products and body sprays and all the stuff the kids are using today. I drove it to the high school, albeit with the windows wide open. And when I got to the high school, I tossed a box of tampons to a group of young boys. I tossed a, bo a bottle of men's body spray to a group of young girls. And they giggled too. Uh, then we downloaded a vetted app. They looked up their products. They reviewed the ingredients and even looked for safer, less toxic options. 
What I discovered about these pilot projects really got me excited. You see, it turns out adolescents and teenagers are the most important demographic for environmental health education, and here's why. They're extremely self-conscious about their changing bodies, and they're under a great deal of pressure every day to look good and smell good. So it's really no surprise to many of us that teenagers and adolescents use the most personal care products daily than any other demographic which exposes them to that many more chemicals on a regular basis than even adults. Two, their bodies are exploding with hormones, hormones that are part of the human endocrine system, which is very sensitive, hormones that control brain function and body growth. And because of all this hormonal change, this is considered a critical window of human development. Research shows that adolescents and teenagers are more vulnerable, more susceptible to the effects of synthetic chemicals during this critical window. And especially sensitive to chemicals known as endocrine disrupting chemicals, which are in many of their personal care products. Three, teenagers and adolescents are just starting to form habits that they'll use and maintain throughout their lives. If we can put them on the right track now, they'll lead healthier lives as adults. If they choose to have children one day, they'll expose their own children to fewer chemicals. And they're likely to share habits, healthy habits with their own children, and they're likely to move the consumer product market in a safer direction just through purchasing power. And four, the kids want this information. So, this has become my life's work, to roll out this curriculum at scale and make environmental health a key component of health and science education nationwide. In the future, our kids will understand how our world impacts their health so they can choose better what they put in, on, and around their bodies, so they can demand better policy and stricter regulations, so they can fight for environmental justice, for communities in need. One day soon, our kids will inherit this earth, and it's our jobs to teach them what we didn't know, so that they can be better stewards for their body as well as for this planet. As a doctor, I wanna see fewer patients with breast cancer, thyroid conditions, diabetes, and autoimmune disease, especially at younger ages. As a mom, I want my kids to be safe and healthy. And I want your kids to be safe and healthy too. So let's innovate high school health and science education to truly reflect our times and empower all of our children with scientific information and tools and resources to live healthier lives now, in the future, and for generations to follow. Thank you.